Sony has invited us to check out their booth at NAB 2012. Sony has been killing it with their solid cameras and easy workflow, but sometimes it takes a translator to understand their tech talk. This year, I have a solution for that. Juan, what's the difference between the FS700 and the FS100? Well, they have many things in common. I think the most important one is the lens mount, it's an E-mount, so this is also retained on the FS700. The main differences are the image sensor. In the case of the FS100, it's a HD uh, sensor. This camera has a 4K sensor. This camera also can gear at very high speed. So the FS100 can gear at 60 frames per second maximum frame rate. This camera can go up to 960 frames per second. So it can shoot at uh, 120 and 240 frames per second at full HD resolution. At 480 frames per second, it reduces the vertical resolution slightly, and then at 960, we're slightly cropping the image and further reducing the resolution. It also has a set of uh, neutral density filters. When we launched the FS100, the big advantage of this uh, E-mount is that it has a very shallow flange, so you can virtually use any SLR lens, any 35 millimeter lens, DSLR lenses, and cine lenses with a camera. So it gives it tremendous flexibility when it comes to optics. What the what? Uh, this camera has a 4K sensor. It has a four position neutral density filter. It has a 3G HDSDI port, which is not present on the FS100. Uh, the HDMI can output native progressive as well as uh, pull down. And it has a Ari Roset. Uh, and the handle, and it can crank at very high speeds. Well, uh, this camera is 4K ready. The image sensor and the processing is capable of handling the signal. The only thing that is missing is the recording device. So we're now developing that, and we were going to announce later uh, um, a Sony recorder that will be capable of uh, taking the 4K signal from the camera. Juan, what are the best applications that are suited for this camera? Well, this camera is, is truly suited uh, for production. It is capable of producing very high quality images. It has cine gammas. It can capture very high dynamic range. And because it has high speed, which is something that you have to spend upwards of $30,000 today, it is opening the ability to shoot high speed to uh, producers. So this is something that is very exciting. Peter, what new workflows has Sony designed for the F3? Okay, so the F3 is capable of remarkable picture quality, and there are several different ways in how you can handle that. Internally to the camera, we can record at 35 megabits per second, which is a variable bit rate codec, which means the codec is frame by frame analyzing the complexity in the picture and is dynamically changing how much information it records onto the S by S cards uh, based upon the detail and the complexity of the image. So we can go higher with the data rate, we can go lower with the data rate. It's a very intelligent algorithm. However, to take advantage of what the F3 can do to its maximum potential, which is very significant, you have to come out of the camera. And so we can do that in a number of different ways. We have on the back of the camera, we have dual link RGB 444. We have uncompressed 10-bit outputs across all of the, the back of the camera. So whether you want to come out 10-bit uncompressed 422 or 10-bit uncompressed RGB, you can then record that to an external recorder at extremely high picture quality, taking advantage of the maximum dynamic range of what the imager is capable of producing, which is over 800%. What the what? Okay, so in this particular example, what we have here is a new recorder that we've just introduced called the SRR1. What the SR1 will do is it will take the amazing picture quality of what the F3 is capable of producing and record that faithfully to what we call SR memory cards in the recorder. So in simple language what it means is the F3 is capable of producing an extraordinary picture but in order to get the most benefit out of that picture you have to record externally from the camera because the camera cannot handle that amount of uh, recording power internally. What it means is Sony's log gamma curve. In very simple terms what that means is in normal broadcast cameras, in normal, in normal technology, you only, you're only getting a certain amount of what the image sensor is capable of producing because of all, all, of the, all of the limitations with working with television. Television can only show you a certain range. 
So most video cameras are programmed to work with that range so that you don't destroy the imagery outside of that range when you're looking at it on a television. So with S-Log, with the log gamma curve applied in the camera or externally or with the setting turned on, we can take the dynamic range of what the image sensor is capable of producing from 460%, which is this, all the way out to 800%, which is all the way out here. So what that means in simple terms is, by turning on this feature in the camera, you'll be able to see a lot more. So a LUT is a lookup table. It's a text file that converts the image sensor data, that converts the picture as it is, into something else. So when you apply a LUT in post-production or in the camera, you'll see the quality, you'll see the dynamic range and the color saturation and the contrast and the brightness of the image change to reflect what that conversion table is doing to the image. It's a non-destructive process. You can remove that table and apply a different one and uh, you can you know, work to your heart's content to finish the footage the way that you want it to look. Glenn, can you explain what the IP Live Production Unit is? Uh, absolutely. The, uh, the NXL IP55 is Sony's first IP production product that we've done for allowing us to do live IP uh, transmission in this particular case of up to three HDSDI signals going back to a control room and sending a gen lock back out to the remote side as well as uh, transmitting intercom, tally, uh, control signals for uh, control of remote uh, pan tilt heads for example. Uh, and. And what you know, the most important thing is, is that it allows us to actually keep all those signals, you know, locked together and transmit them in less than one field time. So that allows us to actually really use this as in a live in, uh, environment. What the what? In this particular example right here, we're showing it actually with a small production switcher, which would be ideal for corporate also. But it allows you to actually very easily take multiple cameras and audio and your your intercom and tally data and all that over a single wire back to your control room, which really simplifies the connectivity and makes it a lot easier for you to make that connection between your studio and your control room with just a single cable. Well, there you have it. That is what is new and noteworthy at the Sony booth at NAB 2012. Hey there, one more thing. Look down there. What the what? No, under the video player. It's the share button. Click it and share this video. Until next time. So where do you download information over Drive? Go to Cruise Control's website and click Podcast.